Hello and welcome to Scott Plays. Today I am taking a look at On Mars. This is a super heavy thematic Euro game uh, published by Eagle Griffin, designed by Vitor Lacerta and with art and graphic design by Ian O'Toole. So let's take a look inside this box. Um, the first thing to say is, although this is obviously brand new and still in shrink, um, I have actually played this game uh, a number of times. Um, it was my third most played game of last year and it would have got my um, game of the year if it had arrived in time uh, but it didn't so I'm counting it as a 2020 release even though Board Game Geek says it's 2019 um, but yeah I played exclusively on Tabletopia um, I was involved a little bit in the playtesting uh, right at the very end didn't do very much at all but yeah, did, like, did a little bit um, on the, the, the solo variant um, and yeah, just gave my li little bits of feedback um, on the game. Uh, anyway, so let's have a look at what we've got here. It's a huge, heavy box full of components. A Little flyer from Eagle Griffin, uh, various games on there. Reference book, rule book, and another thing to say at this point is the rule book was edited um, by Paul Grogan, um, very good rule book editor. Uh, then we have here, this is a little board that um, it goes on the, there's a, when I get to it, I'll, I'll show, show what that does when I get to it. I know what, what it is. <laughs> um, we've got some player aids. These are really nice. Uh, yeah, these are nice. Come back to those in a moment. We've got the main board, which I will not open right now but what I can say is the print on this looks really nice. A uh, couple of little baggies, a board for uh, scientists and contracts. Um, again I'll, I'll come back to that a bit later. And then we have the punch boards so it looks like we've got Three punch boards. These are super thick. They've got to be three mil thick. Uh, possibly two mil. Uh, probably three mil. Maybe even four. But yeah, really nicely printed. Nice slight linen finish to them. Uh, everything, everything lines up really nicely, certainly on this first punch board. Uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, these are very nice. Um, so quick, quick mention of what you're looking at here. So going back to the first punch board, uh, we've got um, various buildings that you can build. Um, these are greenhouses, uh, water... Um, purification I guess, um, energy generation, oxygen generation and then some mines for getting uh, minerals out of the Martian planet surface uh, and then these are resource tokens so this is all um, plants resources, this is all energy resources and then yeah, next one, we've got shelters in the four player colours. So you've got a, a yellow, a purple, a blue and a green. Uh, we've got more water 
purification buildings, uh, water resources, and then oxygen resources. Um, and yet again, the alignment of all the punch cuts is just fantastic. This is really high quality. And then we've got more resources. These are all minerals, some more buildings. Uh, looks like another one of each of the main types of buildings other than shelters. And then a variety of tiles, um, the useful sorts of things. Uh, these are scoring, um, you've got technology tiles, um, can't remember what these are called, discovery tiles I think. These are, um, I can't remember what those are called at all. Uh, more, actually no, those are not resources, those must be, those are more technology tiles, yeah. Um, and then you've got a series of tiles that can be used when you're first playing the game to, to give you an idea of how to start, essentially. So yeah, that's the main punch boards, and as I said, three of those, really nice quality. And then we've got the player boards. These are excellent. Uh, double layer, so you've got cutouts for putting cubes down there. You'll have ships standing on this side. And then your, for the want of a better word, worker meeples, they're actually called colonists in the game. They stand in here, and then you can also stand some in here. These will be covered up by shelters to begin with, and then you have a, uh, a working area there that the colonists get moved into. Um, yeah, these are excellent, really. Yeah, so that's the yellow boards. Let's have a look at the back. Oh, that's a nice, nice signature on the back. Uh, and yeah, some of Ian O'Toole's artwork, really subtle, sort of um, kind of dirt and stuff on it, which is just really nice. I, I, I really like the way Ian puts those kind of touches into everything, um, but I'm getting getting on to art and graphic design, so I'll come back to that in a minute. Right, purple board, again, exactly the same. The green and the blue, yeah, all exactly the same. Um, I'll explain a bit more about these in later. Um, right, a bit of foam to keep everything in place. And then this really nice red cover over the main trays and all the other components. So this will be nice for keeping everything in place. A slight bump on that, but that's fine. Right, so, okay, so let's take a look at this tray to begin with. It's got, got its own little lid. This is what this board is for. Um, in the game, you'll have the different types of buildings, main buildings that you can build um, in this tray and this board is a little indicator of the costs associated with each of the, the types of buildings. Um, and yeah, that's really nice. Let's put that out of the way. And then we have, we have some, uh, these must be mission and goal cards. There's more than enough for them to be one or the other, so that's probably both mission and goal cards. Uh, I don't know if this will come in the retail version, but this is um, escape plan replacement cards. Uh, basically, there's a slight error in the uh, printing of escape plan and in the solo cards. This is replacements for that. That's a really nice touch from Eagle Griffin. Then over here we have, again these, the ones on top are to do with uh, aids for new players. Um, and then you've got uh, 
scientists, no, not scientists, blueprints, um, which, yeah, I'll, I might talk about later. These are your, your scientists, and at the back there's, by the, from the look of it, the contract cards. Um, those are very nice. Um, and one thing I can, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna open the packs of cards at this stage, but I can see that they're nice linen finish. Um, it's Eagle Griffin, so I expect the card stock is really good as well. And then we have lots of meeples, nice bag of silica gel. Um, yeah, so player colours. Wow, those are green. There was, um, during the Kickstarter, there was concern about some of the colours. Uh, these are actually the yellow player pieces, and they're kind of green. So that's, that's fine. Um, I will get some of these out of bags in a minute. Uh, these are the, the blue player. Um, and yeah, the, the ones that were, there was main concern about was between the blue and the green. It was thought they would be too similar, but actually these are not at all similar. That's great to see. So yeah, uh, all these player pieces uh, and these purple player, so that's your four player colours, and then here's your, your workers or colonist meeples, really nice, uh, one, two, three, four player colours again, then we've got some scientists, and yeah, those are really nice, and then a, an assortment of markers and indicators, um, which I might talk about later. Um, and again, another bag with various markers and indicators that are used in the game. And then this looks like it's one spare colonist in each of the player colors. Um, and finally, or last but not least, we have, I can't remember what, the, they ended up calling these the um, Mars crystals or something like that. Um, yeah, nice little, the, the usual uh, little acrylic crystal things in a nice um, slightly blue color. Yeah, they're really nice. Right, and then the, the insert, I think it was Game Trays that did the insert. Um, if not, it's up to game trays quality. Really nice uh, injection molded, no, not injection, vacuum form molded plastic insert. Um, you have two separate trays for your player pieces and then everything else goes into the, the other part. So when you're playing, you can take these out and hand them to a pair of players. Um, and basically some people have taken to removing this top part of this tray and using that in game. I don't think that's really necessary. Um, certainly it's not something I will be doing with my insert. Um, the, but yeah, various spaces for everything else. Uh, I think if I remember rightly, Cards go in here. Um, they're depending on the sleeves you use. They there might be space in there for sleeved cards. If not, you've also got this space that you can put cards in. Um, and then basically the things that would go in there go into this section instead. Uh, so let's put those back. Right. Um, yeah, the various punch out tiles go in all of these spaces. Uh, I think you can can put these cards over here as well, I think. Anyway, that's that's the ah that was no, that was the that was the square cards, wasn't it? That's the scientists and contracts, those 
mini cards go there, main size cards go there. And these are poker size and I uh, can't remember, I think they're mini American, might be mini Euro, but they're they they are a standard size. The, the square cards, of which there aren't that many, they're not a standard size, but they are the the width of a uh, standard poker size card. So you can always sleeve these in a uh, poker size sleeve and just cut it down to to the right size if you want. Okay, now, can't quite remember where everything goes. I think basically you put the, the main markers, the scientists, uh, the other markers all in there. Then over this side, you've got your player starting, um, or yes, player, I uh, can't remember what they're called, shelters. That's what they're called. For each player colour, you've got space for the shelters, you've got space underneath for the starting resources, and then all of the player pieces go in one of these rectangle. I mean, clearly I can't <laughs> easily get them all in as they are, but yeah, that's without unpacking them. Um, but that's, that's the idea. They go in there. Uh, so yeah, uh, um, the crystals, I'm not sure where they will end up going, probably in one of these spaces. Um, yeah, let's have a look at a look at some of the player pieces. Um, let's go with the purple ones. So we have a Mars rover. And these are really nice, nice screen printing on them. Um, yeah, really good chunky wood. Uh, you've got little robots. These are um, sort of construction robots. Uh, yeah, again, really nice screen printing, nice chunky pieces and there are a number of those. Uh, one, two, three, four. You start with one in play and then you can get the rest of them later on. You have your, this is basically your uh, player turn order piece. It's a nice astronaut shape again with some excellent um, screen printing on it. Really nice. And then you've got um, shuttles or spacecraft. Um, if you remember when I looked at the player boards, I said there was space for putting spacecraft down one side. That's where these go, a little stud up on the end. Um, so yeah, you get one, two, three, four, five of those. And you then have a set of building pieces. These are all, oh, and there are some cubes as well. Yeah, each player gets a set of cubes that are used to, to mark um, sort of um, progress in uh, adding to the colony on Mars. Um, a score tracker, uh, and then a set of building meeples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like. These are, for each player, they are identical, um, but the each player has a different shape. I'll show you in one of the other types in a second, and you'll see the, how, how they are a different shape. Um, and then we have your colonists again. And once again, excellent screen printing. Um, and there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of those 
And these, yeah, again, they're just really nicely produced, nice and chunky. The screen printing is really good. Um, yeah, I mean, Eagle Griffin always do really nice production quality, so this is up to, if not exceeding what I expected. The, the ships in particular, these are, these are really nice. They're much bigger than I thought they would be. Um, same with the robot and the the rovers there they're really nice um, the, the meeples colonist meeples are sort of about standard meeple height so um, yeah let's have a look at one of the other building shapes so the green buildings if we look at there's the purple and get one of the green ones out they are a different shape so, you know, even if you can't immediately tell the, the colours apart, um, certainly for the upgraded buildings, you can tell them apart by shape, which is a, it's a really nice little touch. Put that in the right space, and I won't get all of these out at the moment, um, but yeah, we can, not sure if you'll be able to see that on the camera, but there's the the yellow building shape and then the blue has a nice little um, satellite dish on it um, and yeah that's basically it so loads of components all really nice uh, oh, I'll tell you what I will just open the scientist and the contract buildings to look at the uh, the cardstock that was used, um, but as I said, it's Eagle Griffin. I expect it's going to be really nice cardstock. Oh yeah, yeah, this is excellent. So as I thought, really nice, subtle uh, linen finish, really good print quality, and yeah, they're not the not the heaviest of cards, but um, they're certainly good quality. Um, I, I'm going to be sleeving, but I mean, you could get away with not sleeving these. Right, so let's take a look at the, the art and graphic design. I, I've spoken a bit about this um, already, but we can go into a bit more detail about it. Um, just get the main pieces back again. Um, yeah, the, the main things to, to look at are, I mean, obviously the cards are really nice, really clear. Um, the player boards, um, once you understand what all of the iconography means on here, um, it's all really clear. Uh, you, you can easily read what everything does, what everything means, um, the fact that these are end game scoring, these are costs at the top, the bonus that you get for putting pieces in here. Um, similarly, the end game scoring bits here, and um, the fact that you get two, or you can place two colonists in. Um, these uh, similarly the f costs for getting a new uh, ship the bonus you get for getting a new ship um, yeah loads of stuff oh, and the, the limits on resources you can hold are all nicely printed on here as well uh, then similarly the all of the tokens are all really nice nice clear bold graphic design just excellent i mean eno tool as i've said before is possibly the best uh, at what he does in the game industry at the moment in my opinion um, he's just so so good 
Um, and yeah, the, these are all really nice. Um, but the main thing I want to show you is the main board. Um, just put this out of the way because this, this is, it, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, there's, there's a really nice thing on the back. Um, I won't show you all of this, but there's uh, a, the background of the main board is repeated on the back of the main board without any of the extra graphics and stuff that uh, laid over the top of it. And I would love to have this just as an, a poster or something. Um, but yeah, let me get the the main board uh, opened up, if I can remember how to do this without damaging it. I think it's that way. And then, no, that's not how you do it. Must be the other way up. There's, there's a proper way to do this. That's it, I think. No, that's not quite it. Uh, is it like that? No. Like that. And then... Oh, I wish I could remember. Yeah, that's going to have to do for now if I do that. Right, like, like that. Try, trying to do it without damaging the board is really difficult. Okay, let's put that down and that over and then that over and then I can turn it round so that when it's open, it will be the right way round. There we go. Right. So yeah, the basically the, the background that is on the back of the uh, this main board is this uh, surface of Mars and then right over here bring, try and bring that into shot you've got a space station in orbit and yeah again just fantastic really nice clean crisp clear graphic design in every single aspect uh, the all of the iconography once you know what it all means is really clear everything is really nicely printed um, yeah I'm just so so good uh, it's I mean it's I, I don't know what <laughs> what else to say about it I mean if if you know you know tools art and graphic design you'll know how good it is and this is possibly his best work to date in my opinion it is that good it's just beautiful but then i kind of like this graphic style as well so you know obviously that is completely subjective and you might not like it i love it so let's talk about the game itself and how it plays um, I'm not going to cover the rules in very much detail. Um, as I said in the introduction, I think this is a very heavy game. It's very thematic, but it's also very heavy. Um, and so, yeah, there, there's simply too much going on for me to explain in an overview video. Um, if you want to know how to play, I highly recommend the official how to play video uh, that's done by Paul Grogan of Gaming Rules. I'll stick a link to that video in the description so you can check that out. Um, but what I will do is I'll give you a, a brief overview of how the game works. Um, so the main board is divided up into two main 
parts. You've got the orbital side and the surface side. Um, there's sort of a third part down here, which is the life support system, um, but that's kind of part of the surface side of the board. Um, each side is uh, or has a number of action uh, spaces. Um, some of them are essentially worker placement. You're using your colonists to place in squares to take an action. Other, other ones you don't need to do that. You can just take the action. For example, this is the tech area. Uh, you put tiles in here that um, you take this action to gain one of those. It goes on your player board and that allows you to do things like building buildings uh, more effectively or efficiently, which is not even really quite those. Anyway, it modifies what you can do. As I said, go and watch Paul's video to see exactly how those work. Um, and then you've got another work placement space for uh, upgrading those. So that, that's all about tech. Up here you've got this one is um, getting blueprints. This allows you to improve the buildings after you've, or it allows you to take the first step in improving the buildings after you've built them on the, the surface. Um, and then down here you've got a, a warehouse with various resources in um, that get replenished every so often. And you can, again, without doing worker placement, you can take the action to take resources out of the, the warehouse. And then over on the surface, you've got your worker placement action spaces for the build a building action, the worker placement spaces for upgrade a building. That's what you need the blueprints for. And then you've got sort of worker placement spaces. There's one for each player uh, for taking either a scientist or a contract. Scientists help you uh, do additional actions. Contracts give you victory points at the end of the game for having certain resources and that kind of thing. And then there are two non worker placement actions. You can move your rover and your robot around the surface of the of the planet and you can welcome a new ship and get more colonists. And then as I said down here you have the life support system. It's various uh, markers on here that indicate how many of the different types of buildings you've got and the level of the colony and then um, there are player cubes that go in at the bottom that um, indicate when you as a player have contributed to uh, the growth of the colony essentially and those those are scored uh, I think it's up to three times yes up to three times during the game um, down here you've got uh, essentially it, the, the the end game is player driven there are public mission cards that go out in these three spaces and then you have markers that indicate which actions correspond to those missions. Um, you don't have to complete the missions, but if you do, then it progresses along this track down here. Also, if you uh, increase the level of the life support system enough, it increases the a marker on this track and then when it gets to the end you then do end game scoring and then there's little indicators of all the things that you score at the end of the game. Now I said at the beginning that well, the beginning of this section of the video uh, that the board is split into two parts and at the top here you have a couple of tracks um, 
the, there are four spaces on the left hand side and four spaces on the right hand side where you put your player markers to indicate turn order. They also give you bonuses when you place your marker there. And this is split into two parts because you can either be in orbit or you can be on the surface. Obviously you can't be in both places at once. And there is a shuttle that moves between the orbit and the surface, and then the surface and the orbit, and it goes back and forth, and that's what these uh, spaceship-shaped spaces are for. They, it starts on the one space, and so basically every round it's going to travel between the surface and orbit and back, in, back and forth and back and forth. Really nice mechanic. And you can basically uh, take a lift on the shuttle to move from one side of the board to the other. And depending on which side you're on, depends on which set of action you're able to take. So that has a really interesting um, decision space there. When you travel, there are various things you do and bonuses you get and that's how you get these bonuses when you place your marker so if you go from orbit to the surface you choose one of these four spaces or an unoccupied one of these four spaces and if it's got a uh, a bonus illustrated you get that bonus likewise when you go from surface to orbit there's the same kind of thing and there's yeah as i said there's a couple of steps that you do when you travel and yeah that's basically the game um it that makes it sound really quite simple it's not it's hugely complicated uh as i said earlier go and watch paul's video you'll see just how complicated it is um but yeah it's as i said uh, I think I said right at the beginning, I have played this game, um, even though this copy is brand new to me, and this is the first time I'm actually seeing physical <laughs> copy of the game. I have played it uh, about 14 times, um, and yeah, those were all on Tabletopia. Um, and yeah, the, the game is really, really engaging. It's incredibly thematic i think you know the Vito he he does something that i think no other euro designer does and that is really deeply integrate the theme and the mechanics in a way that makes everything makes sense once you've played a couple of rounds or sometimes you need to play the whole game i think with on mars to really understand everything you need to play a whole game but once you've seen what all of the actions do they all make sense and when you've seen how the life support system upgrades and the colony size increases that all makes sense and yeah everything about it when you've played it it starts all clicking together and it just becomes really intuitive um, there are there is a ton of detail in there the mechanics are, are really um finely granulated and that makes it a difficult game to learn the rule book is very good uh, as i again i think i said paul also worked on the rules the the layout is just so clear um, everything makes sense um, I know there are a lot of questions on BGG and Facebook uh, about the game and even within Vitel's Discord server 
there have been a few questions, um, particularly about the, the solo rules. Um, but in my opinion, they're all very well written and edited. And the layout is really nice. I don't know if the... If... Um, Paul does the layout of the rules or whether that's uh, somebody else um, uh, right it's here okay Vital and somebody whose name I am not going to pronounce it's possibly yeah I'm not even going to pronounce that I will credit the well, it's under the heading Rulebook and 3D Illustrations. I'll credit that person in the description. Um, and you'll, yeah, you can look for yourself what their name is. I can't even tell whether they're male or female from the name. It's probably Portuguese or um, something like that. And yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to <laughs> pronounce it. Uh, but yeah, the, the layout of the Rulebook is fantastic. The and as I said, the the editing job that Paul did. I mean, he's again. This is this is one of the reasons I I really like. Actually, I'm getting into sort of final thoughts stuff. I'll I'll come back to that. Um, yeah, rules are really clear. Really nice illustrations and examples. They all, in my opinion, make sense. I. Um, I mean, it's it's difficult for me because I did do a little bit of the playtesting, and I was so I was taught how to play by somebody else, and um, didn't learn from the rule book. But for me, I have read through a digital copy of the rules, and it seems clear to me. Obviously, you know, I don't know how clear it is to learn from, but I have learnt from other uh, Vitola Certa rule books that have been edited by Paul Grogan and I've never had a problem, so I expect that would be the same with this game as well. And yeah, it's, as I said, it's all really nicely presented and really clear. Everything is just really nice. Uh, the other thing is there is a reference book that covers basically all of the, uh, what have we got, turn order spaces, tech tiles, LSS rewards, um, basically as you increase the um, number of, or an aspect of the life su support system, again, watch Paul's video to see <laughs> what I mean by that. Um, you can, you get uh, scoring bonuses along the way. And yeah, all of the tiles that give you those bonus uh, victory points, I think they're called opportunity points in this game. Um, but yeah, all of that is explained. You've got research tiles and discovery tiles. That's what those round ones are called research tiles, square ones or discovery tiles, and then all of the scientist cards, the earth contracts, and blueprints. There are two levels of blueprints, level one and level three. Uh, private goals and missions. Um, and then you've got a little bit covering in-game scoring and your end game scoring. So yeah, really excellent player aid. Oh, what have, what have we got on the back? Colony levels. This, what happens when you reach each colony level? Uh, executive actions. Oh yeah, I didn't mention executive actions. On your player board, you've got a, a series of um, actions that you can take in addition to your main action. Um, yeah, if you played... Uh, Lacerta games before, you'll know that he's quite fond of his executive actions. 
Day, who's making an appearance in this game again. Um, then we have laboratory benefits. Uh, okay, yeah, this, these are the bonuses you get for placing and upgrading tech tiles. And then, oh, this is nice. I, I haven't noticed this in the uh, digital copy. There's designer tips. So, yeah, some brief guidelines about how to play from VTOL himself. So, yeah, again, really nicely laid out, really clear illustrations of everything. Just, just excellent. I mean, it's Eagle Griffin. <laughs> it's always very good. Uh, oh, and player aids. Yes, I forgot those were hidden away below the <laughs> main board in the box lid. Uh, yeah, four player aids and on one side, yes, you have travel phase from orbit to colony and what happens there. And then this must be, yes, this is the orbital side actions and yeah, nice clear steps for for what you do if you take that action. Um, I didn't actually mention this first one. There's a, a way of traveling without taking the shuttle. You hardly ever use that, really. <laughs> it's one of those, um, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are examples of this type of action in other Lacerda games where it's, Something that is there in case you need it, but you will almost never need it. And generally doing it is going to take up an entire turn, so you don't want to. Um, a little bit about, uh, about how you actually take actions and the various costs associated with that right at the bottom. Yeah, and all, the, all of the orbital actions all dis described nice and clearly on that side and then on the other side you've got the, all of the surface actions and the steps that occur if you travel from the colony to the orbit uh, or to the space station that is in orbit. So yeah I think that's pretty much everything I want to cover about the, the gameplay and the rules. As I've said I have played this a number of times. It is really good. Um, can't remember what I said earlier and what I didn't say. Um, so I'll, I'll just go over some stuff again, probably. The, the game is incredibly deep and heavy and there is a ton of stuff going on lots and lots of little details that you have to remember but as i said the the theme and the mechanics are so well tied together that very quickly the all of those details and those little mechanics that you need to remember all become very intuitive And it just, yeah, it becomes natural. Um, the, the the aspects that I most like about it are the 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 uh, what's the words I'm looking for? The shuttle moving back and forth between the orbit and the surface. That gives the game a really interesting um, timing to it. Um, at the beginning of the game, it's moving between the two really quickly, like every single round. You get one action and then the shuttle moves. Then you get another action and the shuttle moves. And you can 
if you wish, move between orbit and surface in between every single action. And, you know, you, you then end up getting frequent bonuses and... Or you can stay either in orbit or on the surface for multiple rounds. Um, and I don't yet, I've played, I've played this game about 14 times. Three quarters of or more of those have been multiplayer. The rest have all been solo. And I still don't yet know whether it's better at the start of the game to stay in orbit, stay on the surface, travel between the two as often as you can, uh, and the same for the mid game and the late game. Um, the yeah, as the life support system and the colony levels up the shuttle moves slower so you you basically get more actions before it travels and so yeah late game you haven't got as much opportunity to travel which tends to tends to make you want to stay on one side or the other um However, is that necessarily the best way to play? I don't know. Um, the Getting the timing right of when you travel it is really interesting as well because you might want to take two actions on the surface and then ideally take an orbit action or the other way around. Uh, but the... Life support system is at level three or higher, therefore you're taking three actions each round, and they're not even really rounds they're <laughs> they're just phases of the game where the the shuttle travels and you can potentially move from one side of the main board to the other and yeah, getting the timing of that right is really 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 difficult um, and yeah it presents a really interesting challenge and the, the decision space involved in that is just fascinating um, then uh, you've got how all the different bits integrate so the different resources you need to build you, you need the different resources in order to build buildings on the surface. You then need blueprints to upgrade the buildings on the surface. If you do that, or if you build mines, then you can start generating resources yourself by traveling that's one of the things that happens when you travel on the shuttle. There is also a blueprint card that gives you the ability to do that any, any turn as an executive action. Um, so yeah, the, there's and the the way the buildings. Uh, I don't know where the, that board is, but if I could find the. Um, board with the buildings on um, you're able to see that the resources that are required by a building are those that are produced by the building to its left so if you look at the, the LSS section of the board you've got the, the five buildings so so mines produce uh, minerals minerals are required to produce power generators power generators uh, produce batteries batteries are required to build uh, water 
I, I can't remember exactly what they're called. Water generators is not the right word. I think they're purifiers or something like that. Um, the water that those output is required in the greenhouses. The greenhouses produce plant material that then is required by the oxygen generators and the oxygen is required for your shelters. Your shelters house colonists who need to work in the mines. So there's this circle of um, buildings that produce resources that are needed by the next building, that produce resources that are needed by the next building, and so on, until it circles back on itself. And yeah, getting your head round that, and the way the scientists interact with that, they are um, matched to one of the building types. There's basically, there are five building types, six building types, six scientists, or is it five scientists? Let me see if I can find the scientist meeples. No, they are hidden in the, actually this board will tell me. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, yes, yeah, six. So yeah, one for each of the, the six building types, the mines, power generators, water, generators for the want of a better word greenhouses oxygen generators and shelters um, and again the get getting a, a scientist has a cost associated with it which is the in terms of the resource that the scientist to its left or the building associated with the scientist to its left generates if you can get to the point where buildings are actually generating that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, th there's everything. in As with all retail Asserta games, all the little subsystems are all really tightly integrated. And that makes learning the game really difficult. But again, as I said, once you play it once and I think yeah one play and you'll understand how everything works um, to a level where you can play it more easily um, getting the actual strategy I mean I as I said I've played 14 times I still don't know what the best approach is uh, Oh yeah, the other thing with the scientists is they are an end game scoring thing and you have to look at the... Basically they score for the number of buildings of a particular type and it's not the buildings that they're associated with. It's... I think it's the one after. I'd have to look at a, a scientist card um, and I'm not getting one of those out again because they're buried below the box and lots of bits. Anyway, the yeah, there's there's in-game scoring associated with those, so you've got to be thinking about, if, you, if you're getting scientists, you've got to A, be thinking, oh, and the scientists can also be used with blueprints to make the executive action that that blueprint gives you free. Uh, and if, if the, you can even put it on another player's blueprint, and if they they then get the, the benefit of that as well. Uh, so you have to think, okay, I need this scientist for this action on this blueprint, but that scientist scores at the end of the game based on these other this other type of buildings, not the type of building that he's associated with, so I've got to think about getting those built or I look at the buildings that the other players are working towards and I pick scientists based on that and then if I'm doing that then maybe I pick my blueprints based on which scientists I want to get. Um, yeah, so many things and then there's tech tiles and do you get a tech tile? Tech tiles aid you with basically doing this 
pretty much a tech tile for most of the other actions. So there's ones for, for building the buildings, there's ones for moving your robot, ones for welcoming ships. Um, so do you get tech tiles? And um, do you do you upgrade them so they give you more points at the end of the game, or do you upgrade them a little and then not upgrade them again? Because if you do so, you're actually aiding other players because tech tiles are not unique to you. The scoring you get at the end of the game is unique to you, but as soon as somebody has a tech tile, then anybody can use that tech tile. The person that owns it gets a bit of a benefit, but it also means that they can stop upgrading that. So that, and for example, the building ones allow you to build um, complexes with multiple connected buildings of the same type. And if you, if you limit the level to which you upgrade a tech tile, you then limit, or one of those building related tech tiles, you then limit the size of a complex that can be made. That's really interesting. You can also look at the LSS and the bonuses on there. They will lead you to try and do things to get scoring from that. You can look at the uh, mission cards those provide you with crystals. Crystals are a essentially wild card. Well, no, they're not really wild cards. They, they're used for taking executive actions. The minerals that the mines produce are wild card resources. So minerals are really useful. The crystals that the missions get you are really useful. If you want to rush the end of the game, you want to work on the missions because that's the simplest way to trigger the end of the game. Leveling up the LSS moves the game forwards as well and gets and is a way of triggering the end of the game. Um, you might want to concentrate on building so that you get lots of cubes in the um, progress area, I think it's called. And yeah, if you if you're doing that, you're going to be leveling up the um, life support system probably, not necessarily, but probably as a result of doing that. And therefore, that is going to score three times for you. And the, yeah, there's all these little bits that all work together to make just an incredible game. It is, it's funny, I, there was a, a, a tweet going around um, today on Twitter, actually I think it may have started over the last couple of days, which basically people listing the uh, Lacerta games that they've played and their order of preference, and I put... If I remember rightly, I put On Mars, Vinos Deluxe, and Lisboa equal first. And it very much depends on what mood I'm in as to which one of those I want to play. Um, it is possibly his most complicated game, um, even compared to Lisboa, I think this is more complicated. I wouldn't say he's most complex. Um, I uh, I use those terms differently. I don't think complexity and complicatedness are quite the same thing. I think Lisboa is complex the way the the opacity of the subsystems in uh, Lisboa makes that game complex. The transparency of the, or the relative transparency of the subsystems within on Mars uh, makes it less complex than Lisboa. But the detail 
mechanical detail in On Mars makes it more complicated. Um, it's possibly his heaviest game. Again, Lisboa might be. I think, you know, that's a very subjective thing. Um, so, yeah, different people will judge the, the weight and the complexity and the complicatedness all differently. This is my personal opinion on these things. Um, but, yeah, I, I love this game. It is so good. It's, it's one of those games where when I play it, it really, really taxes my brain and my ability to think through and plan strategically what I want to do. But afterwards, it doesn't matter whether I've won, I've come second or third or fourth or whatever. I am left with a deeply satisfying feeling and the want to play the game again. Um, it's that type of game for me. It's just so, so, so good. I really, I really struggle to find the words to explain how good I personally think this game is. It's... I hesitate to use the word masterpiece, but at the same time, I don't think that that word is... or using that word is necessarily incorrect in this instance. It is that good. Um, I can't remember if I said during the introduction or not. I think I did. But if I didn't, I'll say it now. This would have been my 2019 Game of the Year if it had arrived in 2019. As it is, it's 2020. And it, you know, it's... Uh, 20th of January 2020 I already think that On Mars has a very 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 good chance of being my game of the year for this year and that's knowing that there are a number of other titles coming that are going to be very strong competition for that um, title in uh, this year. Title's not the right word. Um, yeah, it's just excellent. It is really good. Okay, I think that's all I really want to say at this stage. Um, Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed the video I'd be very grateful if you could subscribe to the channel. Um, we also have a, a Facebook page, a Facebook group and a MeWe group. Links to all of those will be in the description so if you can join any of those that you, you want to join as well that would be very much appreciated. It's all that kind of thing is really helpful. Um, so yeah, thank you again and I hope you will join me for another video in the near future.